I don't think there's a question more frequently asked in the world of film photography than what camera should I get? This is a question asked by both people who have been using the medium of film or analog cameras for decades, as well as those who might just be starting. This video in particular is going to talk about just what cameras people who are just starting should get. It's no secret that there's already hundreds of videos and articles pretty much answering this question, but most of them have almost the same answers. The answers are typically Canon AE-1, Pentax K1000, you have the Minolta X700, you have the Nikon FM FE, as well as Olympus OM-1. These are all great cameras, but they aren't exactly the cheapest, especially because of the said articles that in effect jack up the prices. The goal of my video then is to present some other alternative options for beginners that are all great. They pretty much will produce any type of image you would want to produce in the quality that would be more than acceptable at all levels of film photography. And not only that, but they are cheaper. First, let's talk about the alternative to the Pentax K1000. It's a great camera. It's built like a brick. You can pretty much just abuse it and it'll be fine in the end. It comes with great glass. But here's the alternative I would present, and that is the Pentax Spotmatic, or often known as the Honeywell Spotmatic. This thing, it's built also like a brick, I would say. It has many of the same features that the K1000 has. It's a little older, but for the most part, it has a metered prism if you're wanting to know your exposures through the camera. It comes with great glass as well. In particular, one of the most popular is the 50 millimeter F1.4 Super Tacumar lens. It's one of my favorite, even if it has a yellow hue to it, it is one of my favorite lenses, hands down. The good thing about this camera is it usually costs about $60 with the kit lens. Not too shabby compared to the K1000, which can cost 140 to 200 bucks typically. Another alternative in the Pentax family is the Pentax ME Super. It's about $100 with a kit lens. Also has some fantastic capabilities. It is a little newer than both the K1000 and the Spotmatic, so you're gonna have auto exposure capabilities. It is also one of the smaller cameras out there for an SLR especially, and it's just a easy to use camera that produces amazing results. Next up is the Canon AE-1. Now, it's a great camera. I, it was my second camera, kind of my first camera and it also has some auto exposure settings like the camera mentioned earlier, but it is pretty expensive compared to earlier years. It's almost $150 to $200 for a camera with a kit lens. And my alternative to that in the Canon family would be the Canon Rebel, the OG Canon Rebel model. This is a autofocus, has auto exposure settings as well as auto advance, so you don't have to wind the film yourself. It is truly a fraction of the cost. It is about $50 with a Canon kit lens attached. And really it's not gonna have the necessarily a style of an older camera, but it more than gets the job done and produces as good of results as you would want. The next camera that is oh so often mentioned, but oh so expensive is the Minolta X700. This is equally as common as the Canon AE-1. It's a great camera. It has also auto exposure capabilities. It's pretty reliable but it's expensive. It's gonna cost you about $100 to $200 depending on the kit. And there are plenty of amazing Minolta items that you can get for much cheaper with the same glass. The first of those alternatives is a Minolta 370. Anyway, I think that's how you say it. Anyways, it has almost the same features as the X700. Almost looks the same, yet it costs a fraction of the price once again. You're talking as opposed to $100 to $200 of the X700, the 370 is gonna cost you $50 to $75. I mean, that's a huge difference and it's gonna be almost the same camera. Also like the X700 is any of the Minolta XG series cameras, the ones in particular that I've had experience with that are also much like X700 when it comes to auto exposure settings as well as just capabilities are the Minolta XGM, Minolta XG7 and the Minolta XG9. They're all great cameras, all quite similar, and all are pretty much a fraction of the cost. Once again, they typically cost $50 to $70, just like the X370. The 
last camera that I would recommend in the Minolta family for cheap would be the Minolta SRT 101. This camera is pretty common. If you were looking hard enough, you'd probably find it on your local Facebook marketplace or Craigslist. It's gonna cost you about $80 with a decent kit lens, but it is a tank of a camera. I mean, you can abuse the living shit out of this thing and it's still gonna work. You have a fully mechanical shutter, which isn't guaranteed to make it rugged, but still it helps and it also has a metered prism. So you're not gonna have the auto exposure settings like the previously mentioned cameras, but you are gonna have a metered prism. So if you do want to use an in-camera light meter, then you'll be set on that. Last up on the list of cameras that are oh so often recommended and are oh so expensive is the Nikon FE FM. The difference between those two is FE would be an electronic shutter, requires batteries, FM, mechanical. They both cost a lot, nearly 200 bucks with a Nikkor lens. And there are a thousand, hundred million zillion Nikon alternatives that are cheaper. Now, a lot of these alternatives are gonna be auto exposure, auto advance. They're gonna look like more modern DSLRs but you know, they're cheaper and they're gonna have the same amazing Nikkor glass. The first camera is the Nikon N2000 or F301 in other markets outside North America. It is an amazing camera from the 80s. Looks like it's from the 80s. And paired with Nikon glass, Nikkor glass, it's gonna produce some amazing results. It also has auto exposure capabilities as well as fully manual. And it is in fact an auto advanced camera, which given its uh, form, I would say is kind of surprising. Some models also come with autofocus. Another great thing about this camera outside of its capabilities is the fact that it runs on AA batteries. Not many electronic cameras of the era before and after required such a easy to find battery and that could be a game changer. If you're out on a trip and you find yourself with dead batteries, I mean, shoot, you can go to anywhere and get those double A's and you're back in the field. I would describe the Nikon F301 as a absolute hidden gem among all these cameras. It's gonna cost you with a kit lens, a Nikon kit lens, about $70, which a lot cheaper than $200 for a Nikon FE. I think I deserve a sip after talking about all those damn cameras. But the show must go on because I was already talking about the Canons, the Pentaxes, the Nikons. These are kind of the big, well-known film camera brands, but there are plenty more worth mentioning as beginner cameras. The first one is the Konica Auto Reflex family. You have the T1 or just T, T2, T3. These are all built like absolute tanks. I mean, you could probably toss this thing off the Statue of Liberty or whatever national monument you have, and it's still gonna work. You know, it's just absolute tank. It also has a meter prism, so if you do want to meter your exposures through the camera, you're good to go. The glass is fantastic. The most highly regarded of the bunch is the 15 millimeter f1.4 hexanon lens. Great lens, but anything like a 1.7 is great as well. And these Konica cameras are gonna cost you about 80 bucks with the kit lens. The next camera is a little bit out of left field. It is the Mamiya Secor 1000 DTL. Now this camera, is much like the Konica Auto Reflex or the Minolta SRT. It's built like a, but it's like a brick and it's just indestructible. It's gonna have the metered prism, no auto exposure. It's kind of a no frills camera in that regard, but it's gonna be reliable. And the glass is typically pretty great among this line of cameras. And you know, it's also gonna cost you probably 50 bucks as opposed to 200 or 150. So that's a great thing to consider as well. The last camera or series of cameras is more so for the European audience. I'm gonna go with the Practica cameras. These kind of vary in quality because they all come from East Germany, but they are fairly cheap. You can get them from anywhere between 20 to about 100 bucks. If you're looking to have a piece of Eastern block manufacturing, then this is as good as it gets for the price. The Practica cameras are made all the better when they're included with Carl Zeissina glass, such as a Tessar or Flectagon or all these crazy names that they had. It's a great line of lenses to use. You don't have to have them with your Practica camera, but you know, if it comes with the kit at the right price, I would consider doing so. You might have noticed that some of these estimates are a little high when I'm listing the camera prices. Usually that's because these cameras are listed as working as opposed to four parts as is. Especially if you're starting, you're gonna wanna get a guaranteed 
working camera or one that's supposed to be guaranteed working. There are so many things that can go wrong with these old cameras and it really hinders your ability to learn about the medium when when you have the, maybe the auto exposure is off, maybe the shutter times are slow, you know. So try and get something that's listed as working at the very least. Last, I should mention that I didn't bring up any point and shoots, nothing against point and shoots. There's just so many cheap models out there for 20 bucks to 40 bucks. And, you know, I think if you just look around, pretty much any point and shoot will do the job. But if you're trying to at least learn some of the mechanics of film photography, I would recommend going with an older SLR. To each their own, of course. I think the only thing that matters is the final image and just how much fun you have in the process.